Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in Human Nature and its Remaking by W.E. Hawking, published in 1918. We're going to take a look at a very interesting study in chapters uh, 37 through 38. It's going to be pages 299 to 328. It's going to look at sacred law and the concept of art. And Hawking has a very unique way of uh, reinterpreting Hegel's treatment of art. Because for Hawking, the theologian is poetic and prophetic, and not simply rational and conceptual. And so there's a way to really interpret theology through the lens of art. But if you remember our composite lesson, the central triad that moved Hawking's system was centrality, sorting, and system, which fed the dialectic of pugnacity. Now through the lens of art, Hawking's going to look at that step of sorting and of system and of dialectic. He's going to look at those, but from the point of view of aesthetic judgment, we sort the ideal values through the process of aesthetic sorting. We systematize in the realm of positing with the aesthetic tools of systematizing. And then when we get to dialectic, he comes up with a reinterpretation of the concept of beauty as a metaphysical concept. So it's a very unique and powerful way of looking at sacred law and art. Let's begin with block one and take a look at aesthetic sorting and sacred law. Hawking tells us that religion and art differ from society in the way that they appeal to the will. Religion has ends of its own with practical consequences. Religion confers upon the social utility its interpretation of the will to power, which of course means that it's uh, qualified by the category of agape self-giving. The soul of the self holds communion with the supersensible world, and only the soul can be governed by and appreciate sacred law. So note two, we'll take a look at the soul of man is governed by sacred law. And Hawking says man must have some grasp of values that endure. We must be able to sort out the values that endure. We do that by being rational, but we also do that by being prophetic. And whenever Hawking uses the term prophetic, he uh, almost equates that with poetic or artistic. So for him, it's you could almost say the self is both rational and poetic, and you wouldn't be too far wrong with Hawking, because he really does use prophetic in that way, as poetic or artistic. The notion of personal dignity is posited, and the self takes up aesthetic judgment in acquiring values. It isn't just reason. It isn't just rational. Our judgments are uh, beyond concept at times, beyond reason at times. It's aesthetic judgment. So the key point here in note three, interpreted will to power and aesthetic judgment bring about the realization of sacred law. Self possesses a sentiment of a priori justice. Remember that realm of sorting was a realm where we sorted according to the notion of justice. The notion of ethical balance is posited. The force of sacred law exists in the interpreting mind of the self. The real is understood through the interpreting mind of the self. And reconciliation takes place through the self's acquisition of meaningful sacred law and meaningful sacred ideals or ideas, the idos ideas. And it can only take place experientially through dialectic. We do sort our ideas, but then we've got to move into experiential positing, which is practical in nature and then move into that actual dialectic of pugnacity. So 
he gives us the concept of aesthetic sorting, aesthetic judgment. And the self has to be rational and prophetic. But again, I remind you, in this lesson, it should be rational and poetic. That's what he means there. We're discussing sacred law and art. Now, block two, we'll take a look at the aesthetic systematizing in that realm of positing and experiential righteousness. Because positing is the positing of an internal externality. It's that hinge point between subjectivity and objectivity. So it is based on a perception of acquiring experiential righteousness. So Hawking tells us, first we define the first principles. The function of sacred laws to define the first principles that will abbreviate additional subconcepts. There are three foundational principles that govern this hierarchy of values we're going to form into a model. First, sources of value are to be prioritized over specific values. This is the principle of value experience. Second, personality is to be set above property. This is the principle of the dignity of the person. And third, the rule of life provides the laws for social utility. This is the principle of equity and honor. That governs our systematizing of the IDAS ideas. But they are related to practical actuality. So now we'll take a look at experiential basis of righteousness in note two. And Hawking says the true absolute is to be related to and cooperate with the pragmatic. It must become practical. It cannot remain only theoretical. We must negate aversion to unbelievers. We must negate depriving fair play. We must negate positing a terror of hell in the beyond. We must negate hostility to the novelty that is uh, posited by others. We must overcome the secular principle of recognition. And the detail of our sacred law must be found by the aid of practical considerations. So we fill out the content of our posited sign model of the kingdom by considering the practical implications that are involved. What are the areas in actuality toward which our posited sign model is addressed? We have to have practical considerations. So note, Three, first principles plus this experiential righteousness equals a dialectic of gaining self-knowledge. Remember, we're always seeking to posit a model that uh, is trying to mature the state of mind of the self, trying to imprint the state of mind of the self with Christ and Christ's kingdom. We're seeking a maturity in state of mind. And we're seeking to change the world through changing the mind of other selves to have them take up our positive model, sign model of Christ's kingdom. You change the world through changing other human beings' minds and hearts. And so what Hawking tells us is that the self seeks to create a meaningful after image within the dialectic for that return moment into the state of mind. The need for self-knowledge is prioritized. Our will to power depicts an expectation of a substantial satisfaction that we can use in the return moment. Self-reflection posits an experiential engagement with the real. We are involved with the real, the veiled real of Christ's kingdom. It is a positive pugnacity of fighting and winning, fighting the good fight for the kingdom of God. Our positive work of art becomes objective and fully self-conscious in this type of positive aesthetic systematizing, our aesthetic sign model of kingdom. And again, I just remind you that the theologian is rational and prophetic, meaning for Hawking, the theologian is rational and poetic. We have aesthetic judgments that we use to form our sign model of kingdom. We use aesthetic systematizing in order to organize uh, our posited sign model of the kingdom of God. All of this takes on an aesthetic nature. It isn't merely rational work. It is 
rational, of course. It deals with categories and concepts, but it is also beyond concept. Hegel always talked about that uh, counter blow or return moment where we actually take up the aesthetic to qualify conceptualization and to enhance our conceptualizations. So Hawking shares that conviction, and that's why there's such a strong emphasis here on aesthetic sorting and aesthetic systematizing. And that leads us into block three, aesthetic dialectic through the channel of persuasive beauty. So this lesson does match our composite lesson that we had earlier. After Remember, after 150 pages, we had that composite lesson. And we learned that the internal triad, the Hawking system, was centrality of the soul, sorting of the IDOS ideas, and then systematizing those IDOS ideas in positing, and then the dialectic of pugnacity, or the dialectic of will to power. A qualified will to power, qualified by the concept of agape self-giving. Let's take a look at block three and the aesthetic dialectic through the channel of persuasive beauty. This is a good lesson because he really does posit the notion of the beautiful idea. Remember, he's all about those... Uh, Hawking is all about that uh, energia actualization, and it takes place through a... Uh, new perspective on the concept of the idea as the beautiful idea. So note one, positing as our work of art. The intention of art is to prefigure satisfaction. That's the realm of positing. It is our imaginative presentation of Christ's kingdom. The self authors a positive object that partakes of the ideal. It is the presentation of an object that eludes physical possession. It is only possessed by other selves and the mind and state of mind of other selves. Then he says, beauty should be understood as a metaphysical concept. Beauty can only be possessed by conscious thought. The value of beauty, here's the key statement in 2b. The value of beauty is a metaphysical element as a solution in idea. Beauty is solution in idea of a problem of evil. So beauty is, that's the key right there. Beauty equals solution in idea. Solution in idas idea. In art, the human will reaches its absolute goal. This becomes the self-persuasive power of the idea. There you go. Solution in idea or persuasive power of the idea. That is the beautiful idea. So, 3.3, three, the channel of persuasive beauty. Art presents the object of desire and vividness. This creates a restoration of the worth of living. Every artist is both a spectator and an artist. We posit the notion of creative energia. Energia becomes the channel of persuasive beauty. Tremendous implications here. I think Hawking does a much better job with the aesthetic I mean, Hegel did a tremendous job with the uh, articulating the aesthetics. But uh, Hawking, I think, does a great job of reminding us that as philosophers and theologians, we paint a picture of our perceived worldview. We paint a picture of our perceived worldview. And it is a sign model. It enlists an organization of Samyan signs. So our picture is a work of art. It's a theological work of art. A theological work of art that uses signification as its palette and it paints a vivid creative picture of how we perceive the energy of Christ's kingdom. So the recall triad is, of course, sorting, system, and dialectic. 
aesthetic sorting of the IDAS ideas in order to uh, truly gather them rationally and poetically, rationally and prophetically, and then to move through a mediation moment of aesthetic systematizing before we can enter into dialectic. So we enter into aesthetic systematizing, which becomes truly coupled with an awareness that, yes, we are going to be dealing with uh, the experiential in actualizing our ideals. But we do have those foundational principles. Value is prioritized. Personality is prioritized. This is personalism. Value is prioritized. Personality is prioritized. Rule of life. The underlying current of the kingdom of God is rule of life is prioritized. We have those three foundational principles. Value, personality, and rule of life. And what does all of this do? It helps us to acquire that uh, next step into the practical. We cannot remain in the theoretical. We move into the practical. And the practical for Hawking includes the aesthetic. That's a very interesting notion. The practical includes the aesthetic. That really sounds like conflicting ideas, but the practical is tuned through aesthetic judgment. It is focused through aesthetic judgment. And the movement of energia, this is a great concept here, the movement of energia in Christ's kingdom is a movement through the channel of persuasive beauty. I love that. But he's giving a very precise definition there because for him, it means something metaphysical. It is solution in idea. Beauty is solution in idea. That's his new definition. Well, that's going to wrap up a very profound lesson on aesthetics and sacred law. That takes us from 299 to 328, chapters 37 and 38. So we will pick up next time on chapter 39.